Hey guys, so in every collision problem so far, we've had two objects moving along the same direction, typically the x-axis, the horizontal. And after colliding, they would continue to move in the x-axis. So because everything was along the same direction, this, these were one-dimensional collision or one-dimensional momentum problems, which are simpler. Now we're going to deal, we're going to look into two-dimensional collisions, two-dimensional momentum problems, where um, a ball hits another one and then it might go off at an angle like that. So instead of having just X or just Y, we're going to have a combination of those, of the two. Let's check it out. So it says here, as with every two-dimensional problem in physics, whether it is um, a velocity, force problem, momentum, collision problem, we're going to treat the X and Y axis separately. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to write the momentum equation because this is a collision, so we write the momentum equation, but we're going to do it twice. We're going to do it one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis, and we're going to, to, we're going to treat the x and y-axis separately as if they had nothing to do with each other. Notice that this is just m1v1, m2v2, our long momentum equation, except this has a bunch of x's. This is x only, and this is y only. We don't mix them, okay? Because things are going to be moving in two dimension, we also have to, I have to quickly remind you how to decompose vectors. So let's say you have velocity um, this way and it goes at an angle. So I can, if the angle is right here, this is where we want to have our angle. That's our standard position for the angle. I can decompose this into Vx and Vy. And if the angle is in the right place, Vx will always be V cosine of theta and Vy will always be V sine of theta. So make sure the angle is there. Okay, that's how we do that. Also remember, if we have Vx and Vy, you can get V back. It's just using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so quick review of vectors. So here's an example. I picked out V1 final, uh, V1 initial in the x-axis, and I picked out V2 final in the y-axis, which is this one, um, and I have them here as examples to decompose. So V1i x is V1i cosine of theta because there's an x, right? So this first piece repeats, and then the little x gets replaced with cosine of theta. Um, so what would this be? I want you to take a few seconds to do this. V2fy, it's a lot of letters. Um, if you expand it, right? Um, is it sine or cosine? It's, I hope you said sine because of the y, and it's gonna be V2F sine of theta. Now notice that the angle is the angle for the second object, and it's final because this one is final right there, okay? There's a lot of little um, subscripts, a lot of little letters down there, and you gotta be careful. So let's do a practice problem. Let's do an example real quick to see how this works. So I have a white billiard ball, mass of white is 1.57. Um, let's put white here. And the ball's gonna go this way with four meters per second. And then it's gonna hit a black ball. And after the collision, the, ball, the black ball is going to, black ball is originally at rest. I'm gonna put zero meters per second here. Um, after the collision, the black ball is going to go this way. It says here that black, I'm doing the dotted lines to signify that this happens later, right? So this is sort of before to the left and after to the right. Um, actually, let me write that here, before the collision, and then this is after the collision. Okay, so it moves um, this way with three meters per second at 37 below below the x-axis, so it looks like that. Now, which way would the white ball go? So the ball, if the black ball goes down, um, I hope you're thinking that the white ball would go somewhere in this direction. Now, it doesn't mean it goes at the same speed, it doesn't mean it goes with 37 degrees, in fact, usually it doesn't turn out to be that nice, um, but that's what we wanna know. I wanna know what is V white final, and I want to know what is theta white final. In other words, what is the magnitude and the direction of the white ball's velocity after? Okay, and we're going to write, simply, we're going to write the two momentum equations, one for the x, one for the y, plug in a bunch of numbers. So let's do that real quick. So m1 v1 initial, m2 v2 initial, m1 v1 final plus 
M2, V2, final. I'm writing it tiny because I'm going to write the other one here, so I want to make sure you have space. This is for the x-axis, so I should have a bunch of little x's here. Now, I do have the masses, but before I plug them in, I want to point out to you that mass of white and mass of black are the same. The neat thing about that is that this M is the same as this M, which is the same as this M and this M. So every term is the same thing. So once, if the masses are the same, the simplified, I can just cancel all the M's and it makes life a little bit easier. Same thing is going to happen for the Y axis. Um, I'm really only going to have V1 initial plus V2, V1, yeah, V2 initial equals V1 final plus V2 final. If you want, you can write the whole equation with all the M's and then cancel them out. Um, this is going to be Y, 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 Y. Cool. Let's plug in numbers now. What is the initial? So initial is this, right? What's the initial velocity of the first ball in the x-axis? So the first ball in the x-axis is moving with 4. I'm going to call this positive 4. What about the second ball? What's the initial velocity of the second ball in the x-axis? So I hope you're thinking 0, right? What is the final velocity of the first ball, which is white? Um, what's the final velocity of the ball? Here, we don't know, so I'm going to write V white final in the x-axis. I don't have it. And that's fine. What about this guy here? The final velocity of the black ball, final velocity of the black ball is this in the x-axis. I actually have that, right? So in the x-axis, it's going to be, I can decompose this. This is going to be 3 cosine of 37. Remember, if you're decomposing along the x-axis, it's cosine as long as the angle is between the vector, the arrow, and the y, the x-axis. The angle is like right here, which it is, right? So that's a good angle, just like how this over here is the good angle. Always between the arrow and the x-axis. Okay, so if you plug this into your calculator, you get 2.4. Let me just check here. Yep, you get 2.4. Okay, so that's what this number is going to be. It's 2.4 to the right, so it's positive 2.4. Okay, let's try to simplify this. Um, I basically get 4 minus 2.4 equals VWFX. Um, so VWF in the x axis, this is the white ball, is 1.6 meters per second. Now, I'm not going to rewrite this as VWF cosine of theta just yet. And let me show you why. Don't write this. The reason I'm not going to do this is because in this case, I have one unknown, which is VX. Here, I now have two unknowns, v, v and the cosine of theta. I don't know V and I don't know theta. So it's getting uglier. I'm going from one unknown to two unknowns. So we're going to leave it alone for now and I'll show you what happens in the end. So we're done here, let's go to the y-axis and do the same thing. The initial velocity of the first object in the y-axis. So the first object is initially is this one, right? In the beginning, um, this is the white ball, it's going to the right. If it's going flat to the right, it doesn't have any velocity in the y-axis. So this is zero. Now what about the second object? The second object before the collision isn't even moving. Okay, second object, this guy, before the collision, isn't even moving, so it's just zero as well. Now, what about the one is white, two is black? What about the white uh, ball after the collision? So the white ball after the collision is here. Do I know that final velocity? I don't, because I don't know either one of these, so I don't know the final velocity. So let me erase this, and since I don't know it, I'm just going to write V white final y. What about the final velocity, the post-collision velocity um, of the black ball in the y-axis? Do I have that? Um, I can get it um, by decomposing this here. So if this was 3 cosine of 37, this guy is going to be, let's call this v, um, b or v2 final in the y-axis is going to be 3 sine of 37. 
And if you put this in your calculator, this is 1.8. Now, keep in mind that it's going down, so I got to put a negative in front of it. Okay, 1.8. And that's what this is going to be, negative 1.8. So look what happens. I can just move this um, around, cancel the negatives, and I get that the final velocity in the y-axis of the white ball is 1.8. Okay, one unknown. Now look what happens. I have, I have the final velocity um, in the x and I have the final velocity in the y. This looks like this, 1.6, and this looks like this, 1.8. I can combine the two, okay, I can combine the two. So let's do that real quick. So essentially you have a 1.6 this way and a 1.8 this way, but what I really want to know is what is v white final. I'm not looking for the x or the y, I'm looking for the total vector. But I can find the magnitude of the total vector if I know the components. Um, this forms a little triangle and I hope you're thinking Pythagorean theorem, right? So I can do 1 squared of 1.6 squared plus 1.8 squared and if you combine this, I have it here, the answer is uh, 2.4 meters per second. Okay, so that's the first answer. The second answer is pretty quick. Uh, it's theta. Theta, I hope you remember, if you have the two sides of the triangle, theta is just the arc tangent of the y side divided by the x side. And if you, so this is going to be the arc tangent, y is the height, 1.8, this is 1.6, Make sure your calculator is in degrees, and the answer you get is 48, um, let me disappear, 48 point, where do I have it, 48.4 degrees, okay? So a little bit long just because there's a lot of variables and this is the first time we're doing it, but I hope you realize that it's actually pretty straightforward. You write this equation once, uh, twice, you plug in all the numbers, um, and you end up getting the components of the final velocity for the unknown ball, and then you put them together um, to get the total vector um, length. Okay? So that's it for this one. Let me know if you guys have any questions.